Hi guys and welcome to episode 20 of the One Zen Fitness Academy podcast with me, Kieran Cronin. I don't know why I have to do it in that voice, but I just do. Um, On today's episode, we have a very special guest, Amy Slevin. Uh, Amy is a a beautiful human being with a real awareness of um, people in general, why they get injured, uh, why people experience pain and ultimately what to do about it. Uh, she's a, a yoga teacher, a very experienced yoga teacher, uh, goes all around London, does one-to-one clients and so on. Uh, she's an osteopath, although she will say she's been, um, <laughs> uh, she was an osteopath for like four minutes uh, as it wasn't necessarily the right direction for her. But she does have that background and that extra knowledge that uh, helps people and she's helped many people. Um, So it's a fantastic, uh, honest conversation that I hope you guys will get a lot out of. Um, I thought I would do like a a little intro um, as I listen to other podcasts um, such as Matt Walden of FC2O, um, Russell Brand under the skin and they do like this little intro thing before anything happens uh, and I quite like it so I thought I'd give it a go. Uh, and this is what this is apparently (laughs) so um so yeah i think it it sets up our guest nicely um so without further ado um i'm gonna bring you amy slevin but uh just before that if you um are looking for a career change and um, you want to become a personal trainer, you want to become a sports therapist, you want to become a yoga practitioner, then the One Zen Academy is where it's at, really. Um, We are based in Milton Keynes in the UK, but we are expanding, so we are gonna be across the UK and further afield. So if you're unsure, just drop us a line. Um, Go to our website, onezenacademy.com, it's all one word. Uh, we also have a sister um, business and sister site called onezenwellness.com. And One Zen Wellness is basically me helping you. Uh, so I do a lot of uh, treatments. So we do um, the full assessment, any manual therapy that we need, but we also do an analyze lifestyle. And some of the stuff actually we discussed today, like um, reframing your mind, uh, thought patterns, uh, pain mechanisms and so on um, but we give you like a full training plan we can do nutrition we can do you know yoga sessions one-to-one yoga and so on so if you're interested look it up if you're in London however Amy Slevin's your your person check her out um, stay to the end and you'll you'll see how to get hold of her through her website uh, flow motion yoga and um, her Instagram and social media sites so enjoy welcome to the one zen fitness podcast my name is kieran cronin and i have over 17 years experience within the fitness health and nutrition industries please share this podcast with friends and share with love please spread the wealth go to www.onezenacademy.com thank you Okay, so um, <clears throat> welcome, welcome, Amy. Thank you for thank you for Thanks. coming. I say coming. You know, we're we're talking on the phone. So thank you for picking up yeah. your phone. Um, it's all right. So, so um, if you run us through kind of you, a bit about your your background, you know, who are you, and uh, yeah, mm-hmm. we'll, we'll take it from there. Right. Well, at the moment, I empower people through the movement and mindset and what that basically means is I, I'm under the disguise of a yoga teacher <laughs> and 
um, the, the type of movement that I do it looks a bit like yoga sometimes mm. but also um, my love of movement has yeah. led me to do lots of different things in my life so I do, I do parkour mm. I love parkour um, handstands I love a bit of gymnastics but I'm not very good at it um, <laughs> I've done dance um, I've done ballet mm. and street dance and belly dance and bit of Bollywood dancing I'm really nice. bad at Bollywood dancing um, it's embarrassing um, <laughs> and, um, and also just like I've explored like lots of different types of movement basically <clears throat> and yeah um, there are elements of, of movements from all of those places that I've explored that yeah. I think are useful and interesting for yoga people and for people generally mm. and so you know in my classes and in my private sessions as well I, I just bring those movements in so we're kind of we're sort of like following a vague yoga format yeah yeah with with movements brought in as well and I kind of create um sequences that combine all of those mm. other movements with yoga movements yeah um to keep people on their toes and keep it interesting um and in addition, I do a lot of work with injury rehab, and I do that's mostly my one-to-one stuff. Yeah, um, injury rehab, um, and finding out if necessary what mental stuff might be feeding into an injury if necessary. Okay, and how we can use our minds to overcome um, mm. injury. Nice, and nice. That's basically, what I do. Yeah. So, so um, who, who do you who do you tend to kind of? see on a regular basis are there sort of in are there certain injuries that pop up more than others i mean what's the the, the general um, feeling i see yeah i've had a, a lot of lower backs mm. um a few shoulders a few knees ankles uh and you know along the way other things arise you know yeah. so i might be seeing the same person for a few years and then or suddenly like they will have a sore wrist or yeah you know what I mean so but I think the most common is probably um back okay yeah and, and lower back most specifically that's the most common so what do you think of the, the 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 and I appreciate this might be a big question what do you think of the primary causes <laughs> of kind of like when you see like lower back injuries or um mm -hmm. like, what, what what would you say are the kind of most common things that you see personally right the reason um all of the ones that i have seen mm. have had some sort of emotional or mm. mental connection yeah and whether it's been for example there are some people i've worked with who they have mental, emotional anguish that they don't really want to address. They don't really want to deal with. Yeah. And and so it manifests as low back pain. And, yeah. Um, one of my actually he's a friend of mine um, who had like the grumbling lower back pain while he was married. Yeah. And he was married. I think he was with this woman for like eight years or so. Right. And he had like grumbling lower back pain. And having spoken to him about it, like, and with hindsight, obviously with hindsight, you know everything. Um, <laughs> he was like, yeah, there was a lot of tension within the marriage, and yeah. a lot of things that he was like not saying within the marriage, nothing things that he wasn't doing that he was not acting on within the marriage. Yeah. It was manifesting as, as back pain. And and then actually they got divorced, and while he was going through the divorce, his back pain flared up. Mm. because of nothing that he'd done physically you know we asked him all the questions like yeah. okay what have you changed have you done any different movements recently have you um you know what have you been doing differently lately yeah and like often the answer is nothing so this with this guy um the answer is nothing um but the, the only thing that had changed was that he was mm. going through the divorce now wow yeah. And then when he'd kind of come through the other side of the, the main emotional anguish, yeah. then it, mysteriously the back pain went away. That is amazing. Without him having yeah. really ever, you know, having done anything to, like, without any physique or anything like that. Yeah, it's it's, so, it's it's amazing how we hold on to uh pain you know back pain yeah. um yeah i had a, yeah. a I had a random experience with not a, a back pain injury it was an achilles injury actually um oh, yeah. it was just this sore achilles i you know i i i did everything 
I could possibly do to, to heal this. You know, I was quite stressed out and uh, me and the family went on holiday and within a day of being on holiday, it had gone. You know, th this real debilitating, I can't run, I can't do this and that become my mental, you know, framework and I realised, you know, the road I was going down and I thought, oh, fuck this, what am I doing? And then within, yeah, a day or two of being on holiday, I thought, I woke up one morning and I thought, my, my Achilles is, well, it's, it's okay, my foot's fine. Went out for a run, you know, a five mile run, I hadn't run in ages, but I felt awesome and I just thought, oh. Jesus, like just wow. let go, just let go. Mm -hmm. It's amazing, and I see that a lot in in my clients as well. Yeah, so I'm glad I'm yeah. glad you said that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like even my own body. Mm. Sometimes you know my body's ridiculous. Like I'm doing um, some sort of activity that my brain is just all like I just kind of don't enjoy very much. Yeah, like running or. Sometimes, like if I'm in a parkour class, I mm. love parkour, but there yeah. are some exercises and some movements I just think, oh, I can't be bothered. <laughs> I don't enjoy this at all. Then, like, I'll just have like a little niggling, grumbling little, like, yeah. something within my body. It's like, meh, 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 meh. And yeah. it'll be pissed off and painful. And I'm like, I know that this is only painful because I don't feel like doing this exercise right now. Yeah. And then as soon as I stop doing that exercise and start doing something I enjoy better, it goes yeah. away. It's like sometimes your body's like a little gremlin saying, so you're telling us you don't want to do this, right? Because we're about to, exactly. you know, initiate the pain treatment. Okay, let's go ahead. Let's give you a niggle. And he, he gives you a, an yeah. out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It, yeah, it's it totally funny. acts like an excuse and a reason not to do the thing that you don't want to do. Yeah. And, yeah. It's, it, it, and I think, you know, it's a really, well, sometimes you have to ask yourself, okay, why do I not want to do this? Mm. Because that's an important question. If you feel like, okay, well, this thing, I just feel like it's not serving me at all. Yeah. Um, and this is just like a stupid exercise that someone thought up, but, you know, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't think it's useful. Yeah, I'm not that feeling often it. often yeah. is my most frequent one. Yeah. Um, and what's another one <laughs> i mean you could you could get quite deep and you could kind of you know on on reflection say how does this movement kind of you know match up against my my value my core values you know exactly how does that's it a really important thing to yeah do. you know and how do my core values then relate to my my goals and then obviously my actions and if totally. if almost like if you can't yeah. get that if you can't see it, it's like oh I, I, I don't see the value in this particular movement right now so uh, i'm gonna find a, yeah. a, a different way of getting out of it exactly yeah. yeah so yeah exactly so it's two strategies one is that you either um change your perception of that uh, exercise or movement mm. or um you try and create a strategy not to do it at all yeah basically and yeah. which one do you choose yeah <laughs> <laughs> well there, there is an easier option obviously so i guess mo for yeah. most people you know who maybe aren't as aware you know we'll probably mm -hmm. choose the easier option i think that's the case in something like lower back pain like and that work go to a job you hate and you have lower back pain and it, it allows you and i'm not saying that everyone is like this I'm, there's no judgment for anyone but it may allow you time off work if that makes sense and that, that is a very broad judgment i appreciate but no, 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 but no, i i've seen this an awful lot where you mm -hmm. know people are clearly they don't like their job or career mm -hmm. and they'll have uh, lower back pain or what i've seen recently tmj and yeah. you know and and they'll develop these kind of i guess syndromes very broadly and they'll mm -hmm. you know take time off work and say i've got this okay and yeah. every conversation will start with oh i can't do that because of my back or, i can't do that because of such and such yeah and yeah. it's almost it becomes part of their you know their ego self i guess um well yeah because it's it's actually it's serving a purpose mm. and it's it's helping them to achieve what they want to achieve but sometimes for example for, for someone who doesn't enjoy their job very much that is really stressful because yeah. obviously their job is is related to their income which is related to you know their the, where they live, yeah. being able to pay the bills, being able to support their families or wh whatever, and taking a step to go and tr do a different job mm. is really scary. Yeah, definitely. And 
And so you've got like, oh, like this voice that's kind of saying to them, well, oh, I don't like what I'm doing, but actually doing something different is really scary. And I, yeah, you is. know, and they kind of get stuck in that oh, kind of place. And that often manifests back pain yeah. or anywhere else. Um, and so I think sometimes, you know, it's when the pain gets so bad, this was me, mm. in my, my own knee, yeah. that, you know, when you get pushed to the point where the pain is so bad that yeah. you have to do something different. Yes. And you're like, fuck it, I've had enough. Yeah. Then that's when it, you people, that's when people start to act and they're like, okay, it's time. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, often, and like pain is like, it's helping us yeah. along the way to achieving that change, which is really scary. Um, but you're basically just, you have to get to that point. Yeah, unfortunately. It's like you're yeah. at the bottom, in a way. The, the pain, the pain teacher. You can either, you yeah. know, listen and take the lessons on board, or you can wait until the lessons yeah. become, you know, more, you know, until nature gives you a bit of a, bit more of a kick up the ass, maybe. Exactly. Uh, yeah, you see it all the time, you know, when people have, I do um, a lot of work with um, uh, diabetes prevention and oh, yeah. again, no, no, no judgment on anyone who comes along, but they start off, mm. you know, if they're on the lower ends of the spectrum, they're like, well, I'm just borderline, they'll, ha they'll make less change. Whereas if they mm -hmm. feel they're just about to yeah. go into diabetes, yeah. and chances are they're not, but they feel that, they'll make mm. bigger changes and get mm. bigger results. And, you know, nature yeah. has a way of kind of just teaching and manifesting things like, oh, you've got high blood pressure now, or we're going to increase your <laughs> you know, cholesterol output, or we're going to do this. Yeah. Um, and exactly. I, I, I find it amazing that the lengths it takes some people to to make that change and you are right with regards to you know making change is is scary you know it leaves us vulnerable mm -hmm. and people don't like mm -hmm. being vulnerable no do they it's yeah it's uh exactly because then you know, there are added um pressures there are, mm. you know there's the kind of the scary thing of like well, if, especially if i'm trying a completely different career yeah like i know a few people who are quite successful in in what they're doing but actually they don't really enjoy it yeah. and then there's like there's, there's you know a friend of mine um who's a really good osteopath yeah he's like oh but i kind of just wish i could do something different mm. and he says oh i want to do this and this and this oh but it's really scary yeah but he knows that that's what he wants to do <laughs> and but he's got the pressure of having to support two kids yeah. and a wife and moving away from the thing that's reliable that's you know giving him a good life yeah to start something completely from scratch really scary yeah terrifying so i totally totally get it like i don't know i don't know how people deal with that you just have to kind of either carry and do what you're doing and find a way to enjoy it more mm. so kind of reframe it it kind of goes back to what we were saying about the exercises like yeah. the thing we're trying to like the exercise that you don't really enjoy yeah. um reframing the exercise so that it suits, serves you yeah and so you like reframe the job that you're doing in a way that you're like okay cool i now love my job again yeah, and it, and it is now. I can see how much my job is serving me in all the areas of my life, not just in the way that I can serve. It. I can, I can support my family. Like I love it because I'm helping people. I love it because I'm blah, 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 whatever yeah. is important to you and meaningful for you. Yeah. Um. You know, maybe that's what's required if you don't want to take the scary step. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Maybe like some sort of even like self-reflective gratitude practice at the end of the day just to start that yeah. process of why am exactly. i doing this you know kind of let's yes. realign ourselves Precisely. yeah yeah like that yeah. so you mentioned yeah. uh, your <laughs> sorry sorry no you, i was cutting in you go for it i was just gonna say like um if you do the the gratitude thing mm. you have to link it to what is most meaningful for you mm. and what's most important for you in your life yeah not just what you think is important but what yes. is really important yeah and that honest discussion with yourself is yeah uh, yeah is is, yeah. is, a, is, a, is a tough one I've, I've been there you know personally and mm. uh for years you know i, I was I guess dishonest with myself you know mm -hmm. living a almost like living a life you think other people you know you, you're kind of living oh this this is what people will think of me so I'm gonna do this and 
and then yeah. it, it makes you deeply unhappy you know un unfortunately mm -hmm. you, know, you just have yeah. to literally be in this day and age being yourself is one of the hardest things people can can do, do you unfortunately think so? I actually yeah. think it's becoming much easier to be yourself I think like in the 1950s mm. and I'm so glad that I was born in the era I was born yeah. in because I think that nowadays there is so much more um, freedom I guess mm. to be who you want to be and it, but there is still a little kind of hark back to traditional let's call it um values yeah. and traditional expectations on people but mm. I think you know there are so many weird jobs in the world yeah. that, um, that that people can do mm. and as long as you're owning it and you're just being like well yeah like I want to be a pole dancer or yeah. I want to be um, I don't know <laughs> something, <laughs> something really unusual yeah. um, you know I think it's becoming a lot more acceptable to calm out your own niche in a way that it didn't used to be maybe I, 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 I agree I there's a lot more there. there's definitely a lot more freedom but yeah. the I think from what I see, like uh, you, you mentioned kind of other eras I think I think you are right but I think it was easier to define like if you if you wanted to be your own person it was it was easier to almost define yourself then I think now mm -hmm. there's pressure on people to become something they're not or they believe I need to be this person to get, you know, X in my life. Yeah. Like if you look yeah. on social media, there's the pressure to, you know, look a certain way, to, you know, to almost like pressure that everyone has to find me attractive, and 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 there's there's like these other pressures that nowhere in human existence has ever happened. So I think yes, you are right. There's a lot more weird jobs in the world, like Ben yeah. and Jerry's taste tester and. You know, there's a. I'll be that person. Yeah, a roller coaster tester. Apparently, that's a job. I'll be that person too. That pays. Apparently, that pays fifty grand a year. <laughs> I know. I know. Wow. <laughs> I know. You just travel around the world testing roller coasters. Like, wow. Well, that's I awesome. Think, yeah, things could be worse, huh? They could. Although it is pretty scary because, like. <laughs> Is it a safety test? Yeah, that's it. That's exactly it. So you're like no, the no, test no, no. pilot. You're the first person on. No, no. No, no, no. I'll <laughs> stick with what I'm doing. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but I just think there's a lot more pressures on people like to become something they're not or or yeah. to try and be perceived in a certain way. And that kind of then reflects yeah. into kind of, you know, mental health issues and, and, and depression yeah. and, exactly. you know, all these other things. So the, the, the issues that people have just become different and i think more full mm -hmm. on um yeah. from 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 what i see you know i'm armchair mm -hmm. psychologist but you know <laughs> there you go um you mentioned um you uh uh, uh used to be uh, an osteopath mm -hmm. so do you, do you uh use elements of that are you still you know practicing osteopath no um i if someone has if one of my regular clients has a fresh something or other yep. that I think requires a little bit of hands on yeah. then I'll use it but generally I don't really see that many acute injuries um, probably because I'm not an osteopath but <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah I don't use that much okay. manual therapy um, I kind of stopped doing it almost as soon as I graduated okay I think yeah I, I, I saw maybe two or three patients after I qualified and mm. I was like no just no <laughs> I can't even do this um yeah I just didn't enjoy it I didn't enjoy rubbing people better right okay <laughs> and and the expectation mm. that people come to an osteopath with like mm. you were gonna make me better yeah and there is very little responsibility on the part of the patient to take care of themselves yeah. or to kind of help themselves. And so that is why I moved away from osteopathy mm. and started teaching yoga basically as like just as something else to do. Yeah. <laughs> kind of like, 
all right, well, I don't really know what I'm going to do, but, oh, I kind of like yoga. Okay, I'll just do a bit of that. <laughs> I'll teach people yoga. Um, and then I kind of realized, okay, right, actually, teaching people to move, I probably should have been a physiotherapist. Yeah. Um, but I wasn't, <laughs> so whatever. I'm not, I was not about to go back into another three or four-year yeah. degree. No thanks. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I, I just realized that pe- teaching people to move yeah. was helping them a lot more than rubbing them. Um, and then, even then, I was teaching people to move mm. and helping them to function better, but some of them still remained in pain. Right. And that was interesting for me. And I remember there was this um, one woman, I was working with her about three or four years, mm. with low back pain. And she never really got better <coughs> yeah and I was like why is she not getting better I had thrown the book at her I tried everything I possibly could I mm. did yoga I did like uh, normal normal <laughs> <laughs> rehab exercises yeah. um, I did functional training with her I did so much stuff with her um, but I just there was I could tell that there was a, a an emotional or a physical mm. sorry not an emotional but not physical thing going on for her yeah. that I could not tap into. And back then I didn't have the knowledge and the insight and the tools that I mm. have now to help her with. Um, so ultimately I just had to stop working with her. Wow, okay. And yeah, because I just could tell that I wasn't helping. And there was no point in me taking her money mm. and and not really helping. Yeah, of course. Wow. Mm. Has that been one of your most challenging yeah. patients, would you say? Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've had a few. Mm. Um, I think, yeah, she was definitely one of the most challenging. Yeah. And, and it was interesting at around about the same sort of time I was working with somebody else mm. who structurally was in a really bad way right um, this woman she was in her 40s and she had three discs in her lumbar spine that were severely degenerated right and she was in a lot of pain and she got better within three months and by the better, I mean she was pain-free and functioning wow. and doing all sorts of wonderful stuff. And I actually secretly recently stalked her on Facebook. And <laughs> yeah. that she's now like climbing mountains wow. and doing all sorts of amazing stuff, which clearly means that she's fine. Yeah. And she became fine within three months of working with me. And I obviously at the time hmm. took all the credit and I was like, it's because of everything <laughs> I'm doing. Here. Of course, yes. Which was not true at all. <laughs> <laughs> it's nothing to do with me. I was just a catalyst, and she had the mentality of mm. like, I am not going to tolerate this pain for the rest of my life. Yeah, like this is my diagnosis, but I'm not accepting that it's going to limit me. And it was that that got her through. Mm. Nothing that I did. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> and I only realised that more recently. Um, but yeah, she was remarkable. Because actually, of all the people I've worked with, structurally, she was the worst. Mm. But she had the best outcome of all of them. Yeah, it's, it, it, I think it's... And it's uh, just because she was just determined not to let it run her life. I think it's amazing. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it's like people believe that, you know, I, I remember my first, um, like, I went to my first, like, physical therapy stroke sports mm-hmm. therapy conference and the the yeah. first the first like lecture was there you know you, know, you go to these things to build like cpd points I, I i wasn't holding out much hope but the very first uh, lecture blew me away and basically it was like this auditorium this person stood on stage and said who in here thinks that uh, injury and pain are have a relationship and everyone stuck their hand up and she was like you're wrong really? <laughs> she was like you're wrong She's like, and oh, here's wow. and here's the evidence, and I sat there and I was yeah. like, I'm sorry, what 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 just happened? Like, she just mm-hmm. said that my my degree is just basically what I've learned in my degree is shit, 
Um, yeah. And but yeah, the evidence was there, and it was it was mainly to do with like uh, spinal pathologies, like um, yeah. herniated discs. You know, yeah. it, it, uh, only a third. It was something like, and I'm not doing it justice, but only like a third of people with herniated discs suffered pain. The other two thirds had no pain, no other Absolutely. symptoms. And I just Absolutely. thought, what? <laughs> yeah. It blew me away. Okay. And, and since yeah. that time, that's when I went, like yourself, down the path of, okay, there's, there's more to this this pain. And when you kind of investigate, and then when you kind of, you know, I looked at myself as well and realized, wow, yeah, you know, you know what we hold on to, stress, perception, mm -hmm. all these things. Um, mm -hmm. play into you know that that psychosocial you know pain yeah. model and I just thought how have I missed this seriously you know how yeah. how does yeah. how does how do people not know this mm. well I think the other thing about um, certain back things mm. I think there's almost like a, uh, unnecessary hype around back issues because people are like yeah. oh god yeah. it's my back oh it's terrible <laughs> yeah and so the perception of a back injury is like, oh shit, like I'm fucked forever. Yes. And um, and so like the diagnosis of it, a slip disc mm. or a herniated disc, makes people think that they're damaged forever, yeah. which is just not true at all. Um, they can absolutely get better, and yeah. most injuries do get better um, if you allow them time and if you believe that they're going to get better. Mm. Um, which is really interesting. This reminds me of another guy who once came to one of my yoga classes. He was probably in his 60s. Um, and he said to me after the class, thank you so much for that class. Um, because my classes are a bit weird, right? Um, <laughs> of course. <laughs> he, was like, he was like, I found myself doing movements that I really didn't think I was going to be able to do. Mm. Because 20 years ago, he had a back issue, a, yeah. a, a back injury. And the diagnosis that he was given 20 years ago, he believed he was stuck with forever. Yeah. And he decided after 20 years that he, it was, okay, enough's enough, I'm going to go for a scan mm. to, to see what's going on once and for all. Yeah. And he goes for the scan and the scan comes back and there's nothing wrong. And he's <laughs> like, whoa, <laughs> hang on a minute. For 20 years, mm. I've had this notion in my head yeah. that I've got a damaged back and I've had pain as a result of having that notion yeah and now that notion's been blown out of the water because the scan says i'm fine yeah and so he was then realized that okay i'm fine and i'm going to start acting upon this fineness and this like <laughs> diagnosis of, yeah. of having nothing wrong um and so he was allowing himself to do new movements for the first time that he hadn't explored yeah for 20 years and you know just having that scan saying yeah. it's fine was like a mind blower for him yeah it's wow yeah powerful mm. powerful because well, yeah. it's like you know exactly. he would carry that actual belief and that belief then manifest yeah. you know into something physical and totally. this one scan totally. which is you know fairly conclusive is then saying your belief system mm -hmm. up to this point is wrong and it could have been two things that could happen. Yeah. He could have suffered from, you know, real cognitive dissonance going, now nah, I need a second opinion, third. But, you know, yeah. fair play to, to him. He let that in he and all of a sudden, bang. Yeah. Wow. Mm, absolutely. Amazing. Yeah, I found that so fascinating because I've, I've encountered people like that before, but um, I don't know why that one struck me in particular, but it did. Um, right, it's, it's on quite on a poignant... Hand, yeah. Mm, Mm. Um, I was just going to say, like, there are people that I've worked with also who have had minor issues. Yeah. Um, like this one guy had had a minor um, disc herniation mm. and had had surgery. Ended up having five surgeries before he was thirty. Wow. And was by the time I saw him, he'd had. First of all, he had a discectomy, which was to wow, remove okay. the herniated disc. Yeah. Then he had, I can't really remember, but he had a fusion surgery to stop his spine moving. Yeah. Then he'd had an unfusion surgery. Right. And it was when he had the unfusion surgery to allow his spine to move again mm. that he came to see me. But he'd had other ones in between. Um, 
And by the time he came to see me, he was addicted to opioids. Oh, God. And not really functioning properly. And he wasn't, he was like barely 30. Yeah. And that's all because one scan after three months of low back pain had mm. said that he had a disc issue. Wow. And a surgeon had said, let's operate. And he was like, okay, let's go. Wow. And yeah. <laughs> so message to anyone with a disc injury, it is probably going to get better by itself. Yeah. Unless it's really severe and unless the disc has completely sequestered, which means that the disc tissue has uh, invaded the spinal mm. column, you will get better. Yeah. Believe. Your yeah. body has the power to do it. Yeah, so indeed. Just think indeed. really carefully before you go for surgery. Is what I would say. Yeah, we we'll start with the conservative approach and kind of work from yeah. there rather than in for the, you know, yeah, I want to go under yeah. the blade and yeah, let's do it. Exactly. There is no quick fix. <laughs> Mm. And the other thing about surgery is that it often, well, it depends on the situation, but um, it often doesn't resolve the problem. Yeah. People still have pain after the surgery. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. Unfortunately. So there we go. Rather look at how your pain is serving you and how mm. your pain is trying to help you achieve something or trying to help you learn something about yeah. yourself um, and reframe the pain. Mm. which is what I teach in my workshops which is what I teach with um, my private clients like see how the pain is actually helping them is on the way to something yeah rather than it's just a bad thing that I have to get rid of yeah because it's not it's there to help you yeah yeah it's the, the that great teacher that's saying you know you know pay attention to this area but yeah. let's kind of explore the questions yeah. around it rather than mm -hmm. oh let's just take an ibuprofen let's <laughs> you, yes. shut up exactly. you, you <laughs> fuck off exactly. i need to get rid of you <laughs> yeah 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 that's what most people do it's um i uh i i, I said um something to uh, who was it i can't remember who it was but i said to some, someone the other day who said well i keep mm -hmm. you know i keep getting these headaches and then and then they popped um like an aspirin and I was just like, okay, have you ever questioned why you're getting a headache? I said, you might, I said, picture this, what from, from my, you know, point of view right now. I said, your brain is pulsating, it's going on red alert saying, please, you know, pay me attention, pay me attention. And you're just going, nah, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna shut you, shut your brain up for a bit with some aspirin. Yeah. And I just thought, yeah. can you, can you like, picture how absurd it is i'm not saying that you can't do it but at least question why this is happening you've disappeared yeah oh. am, am i there yeah Hello. you're here now cool <laughs> i did lose you for half a second though I was like, oh, that was that was the most important on. half a second ever i oh. know oh, it was like <laughs> i was giving some proper wisdom there and now it's gone it's in the universe yeah. somewhere it's gone <laughs> <laughs> so um have you i mean because you, you mentioned kind of you know you you, you went into to, to yoga have you mm -hmm. i guess personally kind of got a lot out of a a yoga type practice because obviously you know you, you, your classes you know are encompassing other things but have you got kind of a lot out personally from that um I would say on a physical level, yes. Yeah. On a mental and emotional level, no. Okay. <laughs> um, and what I mean by that is, well, that's not entirely fair, I guess. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, physically, obviously, I went into yoga mm. feeling like, I couldn't do anything. Yeah. I was really weak. I tried these arm balances. I tried all sorts of cool looking stuff and I yeah. just couldn't do anything. I was like, oh, this is so hard. <laughs> but I worked my ass off mm. and I was like, but I want to do this. It looks so fun. And, and, um, and having that achievement is incredibly mentally and emotionally satisfying. Yeah. So yeah, I've had that emotional benefit from, from yoga. I felt, as a result of yoga, kind of very strong, and I've achieved things with my body that I never thought I'd be able to achieve. Yeah. So, fabulous. Mentally, however, um, <clears throat> I approached yoga 
because I was going through a really tough time in my life. Yeah. Um, my sister had died recently and there are a few kind of other bits and pieces that were going on. Yeah. And so I just felt completely overwhelmed by life. Mm. And I was like, I need yoga. Because yoga sells itself as like this heal all. Yeah, it's like, it does. Come, come to us, we will heal you. And so I went and it did not heal me at right. all. At all. I was there, I was open, I was ripe to yeah. receive. Yeah. And it just didn't. <clears throat> mm. and, and then I got really pissed off with it. And I was like, yoga, you're a liar. Like, yeah. you're such a liar. <laughs> because it just did not deliver on the promises of whatever it thinks it's promising. Yeah. And, you know, the thing that really helped me was reframing how I was thinking and that took me um, years after I started yoga right. onto a, a, a completely different thing mm. um, and that's the thing that helped me it wasn't yoga wow. it was not yoga at all um, yeah so I tried for because even after maybe my sister died in 2009 yeah. and <clears throat> I was still kind of reeling from that about like 2013-ish yeah 2012-13 and then my dad actually introduced me to this thing called the Demartini method Mm. and he was like okay you're just gonna have like a Skype session with this dude Mm it's gonna last like four or five hours right and just and just go along with it and I was like okay (laughs) (laughs) like by that time I was like I've had so much therapy I've been doing yoga for however many years yeah. Yoga is clearly not, not helping with me. Uh, helping me with this, and let's just let's just do it. So I tried, and it was a very tough process. But actually, I came out of that four or five hour stint mm. totally reformed. Not reformed. I was not like a convict. Um, <laughs> like transformed is the word yeah. I was looking for. <laughs> yeah, I came out completely transformed, and my whole perception of my sister and her and her death. Yeah was totally revolutionized in a way that 50 years of yoga would never have achieved right wow yeah yeah wow and so I think yoga needs to maybe check itself and Mm. manage the expectations it's putting out into the world because well I don't know maybe it helps you know other people but Mm. It just did not help me. <clears throat> I think you just have to, I don't know, expect yeah. that maybe something else is going to help you other than yoga. Yeah, I think, I think it's a, I think yoga has always been a bit of a, a, a strange one because, um, like, there, there's yoga and then there's the obviously the westernized version that's you mm. know so which is really the asana really that they're um yeah you know, they're talking about but when you kind of go into kind of the other forms of yoga it that's the I kind of i went to them i went to them okay. and i tried yeah i was open yeah but no, <laughs> but no. <laughs> yeah i just didn't i tried all the weird shit <laughs> all <laughs> the weird shit <laughs> yeah well no. Yeah. I even went to India. Yeah. I stayed on an ashram in India for three months. Three months? Three weeks. Um, now, where did you go? For yoga to help me. And it just didn't. Whereabouts did you go? Oh, um, to the south. Um, oh, God. Tamil Nadu, maybe. Okay. Oh, God, I can't remember. But it was spectacularly beautiful. Yeah. In the mountains somewhere. This little ashram with lots of little huts. Yeah. And it was gorgeous. But there was nothing in that three weeks Mm. that helped me mentally. Yeah. Anyway, so that's my kind of yoga did and did not help me story. No, I think uh, I think a lot of people probably you know (laughs) share similar sentiments towards towards yoga. It is you know bigged up to be you know this be all and end all. Um, yeah. you know, I, I, you know, get a lot like yourself physically out of yeah. yoga, but not necessarily, mm-hmm. you know, m- m- I guess not necessarily mentally. 
um, mm. there was only one time I was in so I went traveling went we went through India we stayed you know we stayed in the ashrams and, and so on mm. and it was all nice it was all you know really you know eye-opening uh, but we went to Bali I went to the yoga barn in Bali um, mm. and there was a guy there called Panu and he didn't do any like traditional yoga um, but we all sat in a circle and then um, I don't remember much of it and this is the scary thing don't remember much of it I just remember his hands on my head me laughing hysterically and started to cry and I'd never experienced every like I could never explain it I'd, I'd never experienced anything like it uh, but my missus, um, who, who was there as well, she had similar experience and I was just like, what the hell just happened? Like, yeah. I felt this. Sounds like some voodoo witchcraft. Yeah, yeah. Well, well that's just it. You know, you're, you're, my rational mind's trying to justify and explain what happened. It can't. Mm -hmm. um, all mm -hmm. I know is that I had this massive emotional, you know, release and I uh, felt lousy for a day because, I don't know, mm -hmm. it's like my body's getting rid of something. Um, and then felt awesome. You know, it was like wow, but I've never experienced anything quite like that before until wow. until I started kind of learning about um, like, like like yourself. I, I you know I would probably use different words like you know reframing things, um, but yeah, uh, yeah. it wasn't until that that high, whole kind of way of um, changing your thoughts. You know, uh -huh. really kind of reflecting on values, the things that mean actually, actually mean something to me, being the person who I want to be, yeah. and all these things. You know, these are uh -huh. the things that have made the biggest impact. Um, so yeah, uh -huh. so, yeah, I, I, yeah, I kind of sit, completely exactly. see where you're coming you from. Have to change your perspective. Yeah. If you want to make any real changes, you can't just like expect to have the same mm. thought processes and the same outcomes you have to change your thought processes and your perceptions of things mm, definitely definitely mm. so so you mentioned um your um your workshop coming up is that right i do it's actually on sunday the 23rd of february and i have a feeling that this podcast is not going to go come out in time for that, <laughs> but that's okay <laughs> well i'm going to be doing them a lot more in the future so yeah i guess people just need to kind of check out my website and, and make sure that they don't miss the next one of course what is your website <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, uh, www.flowmotionyoga.co.uk and it's all the words are spelled normally <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so flow motion yeah. yoga yes .co.uk fantastic and you're London based right yeah. I am London based. I have a, a studio in Notting Hill where I see my private clients and and then I teach classes in other places too. Nice, fantastic. And can people follow you on Instagram and you know, that whole thing? They can indeed if they want some really interesting life changing stuff. Fantastic. Um, <laughs> I'm sure they do. Flow motion. <laughs> well, of course. Um, <laughs> it's Flow Motion Yoga on Instagram as well fantastic cool yeah. well thank you for your chat today really appreciate it such a pleasure yeah, thank you very some, much for having me on no worries some some good stuff there and uh, yeah, yeah. Let, let, let's try and get this out before the, the 23rd eh? <laughs> good <luck to> you. <laughs> thank you so much yeah I mean it's like it's this Sunday <laughs> oh yeah yeah alright fair enough yeah. yeah I yeah. don't expect it to happen so don't put pressure on yourself to do that. <laughs> Pressure's on. <laughs> Deadlines to meet. <laughs> Thank you. Exactly. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the One Zen Fitness Academy podcast. Make sure that you subscribe. Please give us a five-star review. And please, if it's not too much trouble, write review. For more information, go to www.onesenacademy.com for all your fitness, wellness and health needs.